seem to happen. The day started out in the usual way. I arrived at the garage in plenty of time to check my bus out. I ran through the standard safety checks we all go through. After starting the engine, I made sure the lights were working. Made myself comfortable for the day ahead and did my outside inspection. Inside the bus, I checked the rear stairwell mirror, the rear doors and the bell. I got my seat adjusted for comfort and good mirror visibility and then set the mirrors. The left hand rear view mirror gave me a clear view of the outside traffic lane. The right hand interior mirror showed me the back stairwell. I could see the right hand traffic lane in the right hand exterior mirror and it would also give me a clear view of my exiting passengers. The wipers seemed to have a mind of their own, but they did the job. I wouldn't have any visibility problems on this shift. The rear door emergency override switch was working. So I put the bus in gear, checked my clearance, and pulled out of the garage. The weather was beautiful, the sun was shining, the day started easily enough. I pulled into a transit zone and picked up some passengers. I had to be careful pulling out, it was a busy street. My right mirror showed the curb was clear, so I signaled. I checked the left mirror for traffic and edged out. Finally, a nice guy let me into the traffic stream. As I was driving towards 10th and Main, I came to a stoplight before turning left past the fire hall. The road was good, so I eased down on the brake and the bus pulled up nicely. When I turned the corner, I saw the fire boys had flooded the street. I slowed down, put too much pressure on the brakes and locked them. You must feather the brakes very gently whenever the road conditions aren't perfect. Then it began to happen. I should have taken that little skit as an omen. I turned the corner and there he was, parcels and all, just wandered out from behind a truck. When you're driving, you've got to make safety a habit. You can never tell what's going to happen. People and cars appear from nowhere. You have to be alert. I 
I've always found intersections to be dangerous, particularly when they don't have lights. That Friday certainly proved it. I was still thinking about my near miss. I heard over the radio that another driver had been unlucky at an intersection. Is everybody okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just a man sit up, please. No one was hurt, and the driver did all the right things. He stopped immediately and checked his passengers. Then he found out about the other party. Are you okay right now? Am I okay? You sure you're okay? okay well, my health is good. good. I'm all right. He got his license number, name, and address. Okay. You want to assist me in the traffic out here, out there, please? Okay. okay. And you want to phone uh, this number up on you this bet. door here? He contacted the dispatcher, controlled the traffic flow, and made sure that he got some witnesses to prove that the other guy did run a red light. You kindly assist me in filling out the forms with your addresses and telephone numbers, please. Hey, you saw what happened to my car right here in front of your nothing, right? How about, come on, hey, listen, look at that. You saw what happened to you. I, I, no, no, no. That's the way it's done. I began to suspect it was going to be one of those days, and I was right. After dropping off some passengers, Susan was pulling out of the transit zone. She checked both her mirrors. Everything was clear. Hey, come on, hey, come on, hey, come on. But while she edged out, some old lady just got herself under the rear tire. Here, here's a number, call the ambulance, please. Got it off. It's okay, ma'am. We've got an ambulance coming. I was in the next bus, and I helped Susan by taking her passengers while she waited for an ambulance and comforted the lady. Okay, folks, I'm going to have to ask you to exit through the center door, board the bus directly behind us, sir, please. I heard later that she was all right, but it could have been a bad one. Never forget, if you get yourself into this kind of situation, call the ambulance immediately, comfort, but don't move the victim. I only had half an hour to go, so I figured the day couldn't get any worse. Suddenly a siren sounded behind me, and I came upon another accident. It looked like a big one. While I got the passengers from the other bus and put them into mine, the ambulance crew checked the car back. The driver of the bus looked in bad shape. Got him onto a stretcher, and I couldn't help thinking that when you're up there in the driver's seat of a bus, you sometimes get the feeling you're invulnerable, like you're driving a tank. You're not, as Pete found out the hard way. Safety has to be an instinct. You have to think about it so much that it becomes an ingrained habit. No daydreaming, constant vigilance, and defensive driving have to be second nature. The world out there has always thrown a curveball at you, 
and you can't afford to strike over.